Today, we're gonna do an analysis video, that's right. We're gonna analyze one of my favorite bands of all time, that's right, Alice in Chains. We're gonna do a little Alice in Chains. We're gonna do, we're gonna do an analysis in chains. Everywhere I go, it doesn't matter if I'm in the sticks playing to country rednecks or if I'm in the fancy, fancy villages of Seattle, they all love Nutshell, they all love Mad Season even. Just being in Washington, people know and love Lane Staley. The song is Nutshell, and we're gonna listen to the one by uh, the Unplugged One. Now there's a lot of history with this song, mainly that they hadn't played together live in three plus years, which as someone who plays in bands, I could see how, you know, they played for maybe 10, 20 years or something, but then you don't play for three years. It's still there. But man, it's not its not how it once was. So they're out there playing, which makes so much sense. There was so much spontaneity and improvisation, even though it was clearly scripted. You know, it was clearly like they wanted to, re it was rehearsed. Jerry Cantrell dedicates Nutshell to Alice in Chains' late original members, Lane Staley and Mike Starr, which I didn't know that he dedicated the, it to Mike Starr as well. That's awesome. Bassist Mike Inez said, when asked what song makes him think of Lane, he said Nutshell. He's like, number one, Nutshell. Nutshell is Lane. And I think that, kind of goes with everybody so that being said let's play uh alice in chains or lane staley's nutshell unplugged 1996. <laughs> i think of this every time i play a live set i'm like wouldn't it be cool to nutshell it start with guitar on a chord progression a couple times have your bass player walk out, plug in, and catch him on the third time round. Mike Starr, known for his sick bass lines. The sick E flat bass lines. So if you're trying to play along, it's like a G, C, E minor, D chord, C add nine, that kind of stuff, but it's in E flat, so it's dropped down a half step. Um, and once you figure out the riff, that's the whole song. Though my drummer brought attention to me, he's like, that's not in 4-4, or at least it's not as common time as common time suggests. That never occurred to me. I've heard Nutshell since I was a child. So to me, I always thought it was in 4, and when he said that, I was like... You'll notice Sean Kinney on the drums back there. There are the drums. When you hear the drums, you know Lane's about to go. Okay, there's so much in that to unpack, and let's start with the drums. Maybe it isn't 4-4, I don't know. It seemed like there was just a boom. So write in the comments. I, I know the internet and YouTube specifically loves time signatures in the comments. So write what you think this would be in if you were to count it, if you were a drummer, or if you are a drummer, or if you're just a musician. How do you count this? Let's go back and listen to some of the vocals here. He does so much. Lane is known for, oh, I mean, he's known for... Right, like covering all your vowels and changing his vowels in his mouth a lot. But when he does his high notes, there's not a lot of room. You don't have room to, you have to, hey, you have to open up. So when he opens up, it's thin because, yeah, he's probably on heroin in this recording, but it's in tune and the tone is, is as Alice in Chains as it could possibly be. Let's listen to it from the beginning. First, we listen to the onset. We, it's a W-E, so there's no glottal attack, which is uh, and there's no like, uh, he'll do that and on an A vowel, and, which is what? Vocal fry, the fry onset. But this one's just a we. So we. 
Am I right? It's little stuff, but it matters, man. It's idiosyncratic to Lane Staley. Next line. You can hear right there. Chase, he's here, but then once he goes to misprinted, he goes into more of a breathy. Chase misprinted, which is interesting. Let's listen. Chase misprinted it's subtle, if anything. I don't know. There's a lot to hear. That's the beauty of vocals and the beauty of Lane Staley. Um, all I know is breathy is usually bad. There's a lot of stuff that Lane does that's usually bad. That I hear a lot of vocal teachers say, you know, I wouldn't recommend that unless you want to immortalize yourself in rock and roll history then maybe do it but it, you might lose your voice i don't know here we go okay that one's even more so the other one's and i like to exaggerate and by the way a and e are the same vowel ken templin vocal academy.com they're based off the same vowel. Now listen to this. We. We. So he actually changes from the A E. We. Keeps that small vowel there, but this time it's. We. It's different. It's we. It's just vowels, baby. Can I get a vowel? Can I buy a vowel? Baby. He rushes right there, so it's. And yet I find. I always notice that when singers rush or drag, because it's the lifeblood. It's the pulse of the song. So listen to his little bit ahead. And yet I find it's a little ahead. And yet I find so everything's a little ahead. Whether that's on purpose or not, probably not. It's probably just where he feels the note. No one to cry to. You know what? A lot of similarities between Willie Nelson and Lane Staley, who are two of my favorite singers, but both known for being nasally. And now I've got this. So listen to that. Battle all alone. I would sing it like battle all alone. It's so bumpy, but he keeps it. Battle all alone. He's so professionally good. No one to cry to. Yeah, Willie Nelson singing. No one to cry to. He's ahead of the beat like a motherfucker. No place to call. There's the breath. There's the breathy whisper. Cause listen to the lyric. First of all, you can hear the bass. Listen again. Right here, bass. It kind of steps on his vocal, but at the same time, the vocal steps back and goes, "No place to." Can't do P's if you're a singer. Let's listen to his P. They call that a plosive. Let's listen to Lane Staley's plosives. His mouth is right on the microphone, so if he plosed, that's what it would sound like. No place. He didn't pop as much. I wonder if that's his technique or if it's the back end doing something. It's probably his technique, but you could hear a place. No place. No place. No place. I, I could do side of the mic. No place, place, place. And it's not as big, but no place, place, place. Man, that'll ruin a recording real fast. No place. He whispers and does a plosive right up on the mic. That takes more talent and skill than than is normal. That's That's the hard part right there. Thin. Ooh. But honestly, that thinness of this falsetto he does here, it's not hootie. Which is how I used to do it, which ended up ruining my falsetto and I would lose my voice. But it's thin, but it's mixed. You can tell by the way I use my walk 
fuck, I keep my nose in it. You gotta keep the sound forward even in your head voice. Or else it sounds like this. Which is how I sounded for 10 plus years. Anyway, the fact that it's thin here gives us all a little hope that it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be not breathy. Seriously, listen how beautiful, even though it's thin. Ooh. Plus the song's about dying. He's, he's looking thin. And it only gets better. A lot of good singers, it only gets better as time goes on. Like their first note may be sloppy, but by the end of the... So the first one's we first verse, right? This is my. My, it has more of a glottal. I hear the uh, it's like, kind of like an A vowel. My, M doesn't set you up as good as H or W. We, cause you, we, he, me. It's, it's almost as easy, but you have to be careful when you open up. Me, me. Me and all you gotta do is practice that really slow for one day, like all day long. Get that shit locked in, and then it'll start coming naturally. Like he's not thinking about that shit. He's I know what he's thinking about. <laughs> I think we all know what he's thinking about right now. Whenever I try to cover this song, I try to keep everything right here in the nasal, or when I try to sing it all, keep everything in the nasal in all the same volume levels, even though he's Rushing again. right here if I can be mine, drums and vocals only listen I feel better there. and everybody comes in right there all right let's give that a run through without me botching it and then let's talk about the guitar over the chorus and that's pretty much it if I can be mine, I feel better there. Jerry Cantrell changes to lead guitar right here while uh, their boy over in the corner, Scott or something. Their boy in the corner. And he's off to the side there. See how instead of ooh, let me get the mic straight on the camera. So instead of ooh, he's over here. It makes the thin voice. <laughs> I intentionally didn't warm my voice up so you could hear my example of a thin falsetto. But you can see how that saves it a little bit to go off to the side. All right, singing's about choices. You're not gonna be 100% correct 100% of the time. However, you make the right choice for the musical moment and you're in. All right, let's listen to this guitar. <laughs> It plays when his voice plays. Which is interesting, usually you go in between the vocals. Let's go back to the chorus. He plays pretty much, everybody plays together. So let's listen to the accents by himself and then vocals by himself. So they kind of do a little bit, but then, then everybody plays that last one. I love it, so let's listen. Everyone plays. Then Lane hits his note, and together, they all play. That's dope, I never noticed that simplicity level. And then he hits cymbals here, which I think is the first cymbals in the whole song to let you know this is the end of the song coming. Simple stuff, simple stuff that when you become a musician and you study jazz and the five on the six and the blah, 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 you forget about just like, all right, we'll do this four times, and then we'll do this four times. Or 
Or in this case, how about you do a thing, I'll do a thing, and then we'll all do a thing together. Now, did it come to be that way? Did they talk it out like that? I don't know. None of us probably can ever know. But what we can know is it ended up that way, and that's all that matters. So maybe he... And they're like, oh, do 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 do, just kind of like what the bass does. He goes, ba da 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 do. Right, let's listen to the solo on acoustic guitar. Something I didn't mention yet is how crappy the acoustic tone is. So I hate whoever I'm calling out, whether it's Jerry Cantrell himself or the people that that are doing the mics. Anyway, the tone isn't great here. This isn't a great tone-wise album, like professional-wise. The tone you get from their grungy, haven't played in three years, now we're doing everything on acoustic guitars, the solo's different. It's the same, but it's got a different feel. But regardless of tone being subpar, the, the album, I mean, the uh, the performance is above par. It's great. <laughs> a wise man once told me, if you can start and end your songs together as a band, you're set. Thanks for watching this. If you guys want more, check out Patreon. Shout out to Tina Metters and Antonio Matias, our new patrons over on Patreon. If you want to see extra footage, check it out. Shout out to Chance over here, the dog, who wants a little attention. So I'm going to go play with the dog. We'll see you guys on the next video. Click it over here. Or whatever.